Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome to Fallout 4 Automatron, the first bit of DLC, oh my goodness. Just in case you missed the end of yesterday's episode of No Guns, I'm going to be doing Automatron as bacon as part of my No Gun drum. And in case you've just stumbled across this video because you're actually looking for something to do with Automatron and you're not familiar with this channel or that playthrough, basically it's my uh, melee and grenades run through. No guns allowed whatsoever. So this is Bacon. This is the character that does that kind of uh, little playthrough there. Grognax armor, lots of kind of stuff to give plus one strength, all that good stuff. Character about level 26. Automatron only activates when you're level 15. So kind of back in the days of Fallout New Vegas and Fallout 3, DLC was kind of recommended for characters of a particular level. But I think this is the first time Bethesda's really enforced it, which is interesting. So my understanding is it does not trigger until you're level 15. I'm level 24, so sure, we'll give this a go, why not? And as is quite frankly traditional in Fallout DLC, obviously the moment I loaded up my game today, a new radio message came in and that's triggered a new quest. So the quest is Mechanical Menace. Listen to the Caravan Distress Call. Alright, fine. Our caravan's under attack by hostile robots and needs some serious help. We're just east of Watts Consumer Electronics. If anyone in the vicinity can come help, now's the time. Ada, loop this message. Yes, sir. So, a distress signal from some people being attacked by hostile robots. Not really that surprising, given what we know about Automatron and all that good stuff. Let's see where we need to go to help them. I didn't recognise the location they mentioned off the top of their head. So, we are looking at... Is that the electronics store that's... Actually, I think under the electronics store they're talking about. If it's not too far from the kind of the Cambridge area... Yeah, just south of Covenant. I think I know... Yeah, if that's the Cambridge crater there, yeah, I know the electronics store they're talking about. I haven't visited it in this save file, but I do know the location, fine. Oh, here's a lucky coincidence. I basically just fast-travelled to a nearby location, dropped on top of a legendary raider that was just a basic one who died in one hit, and I picked up a fortifying treated leather left leg for plus one strength and endurance. That's perfect for my character. So just as a reminder that I've actually got a pretty good setup here. Uh, obviously, I'm a melee character, heavy on the blitz, heavy on the stealth, but I've also... Hello, something's blowing up over there. I'm guessing that's a vertebrate that just picked a fight with someone that it really, really shouldn't have done over there then. More and more vertebrates just keep bloody crashing over there. Yes, I've got, obviously, General Chow's Revenge, which will be very, very useful. While not normally my most powerful weapon by a very long way, this is effectively, General Chow's Revenge is effectively the troubleshooter's, uh, the troubleshooter's, uh, Chinese officer sword. Plus 50% damage versus robots. How bloody convenient. Now, I'm guessing we're coming across some robots right here, then. Okay, 50 meters in this direction. Let's see how tough what we're taking on actually is here. What can we see? A Cybermech iBot. There's a feral ghoul over there. A swarm bot and a blood bug hatchling. Alright, probably ignore all of those guys and instead focus on the swarm bot and Cybermech. Interesting, there's some words we don't hear very often or indeed at all. Okay, into third person mode. We'll just get the. Oh, bloody hell, something's exploding like crazy. Uh, what's over there? Servo, servo mech something or another, uh, and you are a swarm bot. Now you are, ooh, you're a bad thing too. Hello. Uh, so swarm mech junk bot, find the hostile robot, probably kill you. Yep, down, and next. That's a blood bug hatchling. That's still a blood bug hatchling. Oh good, I've got a legendary servo mech swarm bot first up. Actually, it looks like it's pretty soft, despite the fact it's quite big. Oh, explosion. Okay, so that was a legendary. Don't forget that there is a servo mech swarm, but I am so crippled. I'm so crippled right now. Ow. Never mind. My vision blurred over. I'm on legendary difficulty, by the way. <laughs> okay, let's try this. Nice and slow and steady. And then... Oh, no. One of you decided to go for me. Oh, flip. I've just been... What the heck just happened? Ah! What is going on? Everything just exploded. All right, fine. So now you're just a normal swarm bot. Okay, so you're a little, almost like a little variant of uh, of a gutsy by the way, a little floaty thing. Fine. Well, I'm already, <laughs> I'm already badly crippled. This is good. All right, let's get my health back up at least. And Ada, who's my friendly, obviously we saw her in the trailer, is taking on. Oh yeah. Thanks to General Shao's revenge, these guys go down pretty easily. Hello, Ada. You're a friendly, aren't you? My friends did not survive the attack. 
Thank you for assisting. I was certain to meet my end here as well. So we got a robot here. Sorry for your loss. You're looking okay. So my character, there's no option for you're just a stupid robot. I'm straight into sure. Robots are people too. Are you okay? I've got terrible charisma. This is unlikely to succeed. Are you okay? Thanks to your timing, my diagnostics show only superficial damage. I wish I could say the same for my late friends. So what exactly are you? What kind of robot are you? I am heavily modified, but at my core, I am an assaultron. My name is Ada. This was the third time we've been attacked by robots like these. Even with the weapon and detection upgrades Jackson gave me, I was unable to defend them. And Jackson, I'm guessing, is the person who just died, targeting you for a recent tough break. Yeah, I'm guessing they were targeting you for a reason. They must be targeting you for some reason. Probability is high that I am part of that reason. Besides myself, Jackson also created Turing, Hertz, and Porter. Our built-in modifications would be desired pieces of salvage. We knew we ran the risk of encountering more of these hostile robots if we stayed in the Commonwealth. If only we had made the decision to leave. And indeed, in that case, why did you stay? So why did you end up staying? Our caravan specialized in mechanical repairs and trade. The Commonwealth has an abundance of salvage that would benefit our business. It was a calculated risk. Makes sense. So, guess you couldn't have known. You couldn't have known something like this would happen. The probability of attack was high. I should have forced our departure. In recompense, I will seek justice for my friends and stop these robots from causing further harm. It's time to uncover the source and confront their leader, the Mechanist. Now, of course, this is very, very interesting because there was a Mechanist in Fallout 3 who was dressed the same as the Mechanist we saw in the trailer for this DLC. But, as someone did point out, and I didn't notice this the first time I saw the trailer, the Mechanist in the trailer is wearing a Pip-Boy, which the Mechanist in Fallout 3 was not. Might just be a superficial detail. And in addition, there's the fact that the voices don't sound that similar. So, what can you tell me about the Mechanist? Tenbine's Bluff suffered severe damage. Oh, well... Who's the Mechanist? The only information I have comes from the iBot broadcasts. The false claims of peace and justice. The only certainty is that these robots bring only death. You have shown willingness to aid others. I ask that you please assist me in stopping this Mechanist. In return, I can give you the schematics to build your own robot workbench, so you have additional resources in this undertaking. Not my fight. I'm not interested in building giant Doom robots and fighting them against other robots in giant Fallout 4 ro- No, I think I'll do it, actually. I'll do it. I wish I had the proper vocal registry to express my gratitude. Now, we last saw a group of the Mechanist robots at the General Atomics factory. You may find information there that will lead us to the Mechanist. I will follow and assist with your permission. Yeah, that's fine. Why not? Why don't you come along, robot friend? Yeah. Let's go, Ada. General Atomics has valuable salvage. Chances are high, the robots are still there. Okay, so now I can build a robotics workbench, 310 XP. But first, let's go looting a little bit. Jackson's holotape. Okay, that might be producing something useful. And then, ooh, a new threat leading to General Atomics Factory. Jackson's holotape, and see if that has anything interesting on it while I'm looting. We ran into some hostile robots today. They were pieced together, the ones we've been making in that workbench. Weird thing is, one of them was spouting something about the Mechanist. That they're here to protect the Commonwealth. Yeah, protected my ass. We managed to lose them. Those things were dangerous. Shades and I went back and picked up an arm we shot off. Whoever's making these things is an expert. Maybe even be on my level. I'll have to look into upgrading Ada and Hertz for some better protection. Ah, and we've got indeed a Mechanist holotape right here on one of these Cybermech iBots. Beautiful. Together with a whole bunch of stuff I'm guessing will be very useful for me to build my own robots. Though I have been deliberately kind of prioritising picking up things like, you know, circuitry, etc. So I should have plenty of equipment to build my own robot too. But let's listen to his message. Attention, people of the Commonwealth. I, the Mechanist, have come to bring about an age of peace. Do not be alarmed. These robots are your allies, your protectors, and they will not rest until the Commonwealth is saved. Together, we will restore justice and bring about the dawn of a new age. Okay, nothing much there, but for whatever reason, 
The Mechanist thinks he's the good guy. He doesn't think he's a Conqueror, or if he does, then he's just lying, but uh, I don't think so. Ooh. Oh, you got completely burnt to ash, poor little thing. Well, anyway, first things first, the most exciting thing. Let's head back to Sanctuary Hills, build a robot workbench if we can, and see what we do there. And even better, the Starlight Driving successfully defended itself, which is good, because I'm sure as hell not going along to help. Alright, so this area over here seems like an excellent point for me to begin my kind of robot workstation. Ah, here we are, it lives in special. So, a robot workbench, unfortunately I can build five of these, requires some nuclear materials, circuitry, fiberglass, aluminium, plastic screws, oil and gear. Luckily I have plenty of that, I have been storing up materials specially for this. And the nice thing about a melee run as well, is you do often... Preston, Preston, get out of the... Preston... Preston, you idiot, get out of the bloody thing. Uh, yes, the nice thing about a melee run is you end up not using as many resources, so you end up with a great big stockpile left over. I'm guessing you're going to need power, though, by the way. I'm going to build my own start off with, yes. Make one of those. So, we have now built Automatron 197. We've committed some resources to him. So, as far as I can tell, we've basically built a basic Protectron, because all his parts are just... Protectron, but he's very, very um, modular. He hasn't just got a normal, like, you know, right arm, left arm. He's got right arm, right arm, armor, right hand claw, right hand armor. So he's much more grander than anything. Ada, Ada, get out of the bloody way, please. Thank you. And ooh, he's got a voice. You can actually change his voice and his paint and everything. This unit is currently in factory default mode. Do you wish to enable this unit's personality subroutine? Yes, I would like to, uh, but what exactly is your personality subroutine? Tell me more. Personality subroutine? Would you mind explaining that to me? Processing. This unit is equipped with a dynamic personality subroutine to allow a more human-like interface. This subroutine is equipped with several advanced AI protocols such as emotion, humor, companionship, and empathy. The personality subroutine is highly recommended by the manufacturer. If long-term rapport with this unit is expected, do you wish to enable this unit's personality subroutine? When you say companionship, uh, do you just mean like us getting on or are we talking like Fisto here? Yes, let's turn that on. Sure, that would be great. Acknowledged. Personality subroutine activated. A pleasure to see you again, ma'am. Are you ready to depart? So yeah, so Ada is now going to go back to Sentry Hill. So I can either travel with Ada or my own robot. Well, obviously I'm going to build my own robot in that case. So Ada, you just bum around Sanctuary Hills. You're already there. And meanwhile, I am going to craft my automatron. So right now, my basic automatron, who's just basically a protectron, though probably a, actually he's a little bit better than protectron. Damage resistance, 25, pretty feeble against ballistics, 5 energy resistance, and does 70 and 70, because I'm guessing he's got a a cannon or something or some form of actually I guess he's a melee guy isn't he yeah because it says he's got a claw here so he does 70 and 70 with each of his arms and he also has a carry weight of 350 and health of 265 all right first things first oh we can choose many many voices and all of them are free let's go with a nice female voice to start off with beautiful so his legs are all one unit I can either have the protectron legs or I can change him over to ooh to Mr. Handy Thrusters. So he's got the Protectron legs already. Or I can move him over to Mr. Handy Thruster. So basically he moves a lot quicker, but he loses some carry capacity. Okay, that seems potentially like a useful thing to do. So once I've given him the little thruster, so he's now a flying robot, I could give him some Thruster Factory Armor for better damage resistance. Ah, an extra 20 to damage resistance, but it slightly hurts his carry capacity. Uh, sure, I'll give him some better armor. We may as well make him a little bit better there. So now he's a good old flying robot. That's cool. Ah, now this is where things get a little bit more interesting. The hand claws have a lot of different options going on for them. So right now he's just got claws that give him increased melee damage. If I wanted to, I could I could put a bat on in his hands. Nice. So that puts his... Okay, so that there, the bottom of the two damage things, represents his right hand. So put a bat on to put him up to 76 damage. Or give him... Ooh, a vice. For increased melee damage. Nice. I can give him a flamer. So fires jets of fuel. Reduced, re reduced range versus a, a vice. I very much doubt that game. I can give him a hand laser. But obviously a lot less powerful. A stun ward. Ah, and now we're starting to get into some requirements for blacksmith and science. 
And then if you've got Blacksmith one, ooh, nice, a hook. A hook for 129 decent damage and a chance to disarm. Increased melee damage requires Blacksmith. A skull mace? Bloody hell. And now he's getting really powerful. Like, 147 base. That's pretty much as powerful as I am. I kind of think kind of uh, Rockville Slugger's like 160 base at the moment for me. So, uh, melee damage and stagger. And this is all at flipping Blacksmith 1. So now we're getting up into the higher and higher stuff. For Blacksmith 1 and Science 1, the, ele the right hand shock for electrical damage and increases melee damage. Nice. An axe for 182. A laser, basically just a better quality blaster. A cryo jet. Ooh, for people who never actually use the bloody cryo weapon because, you know, it doesn't have any bloody ammo in the whole bloody world. A massive hammer that's surprisingly easy to make as long as you've got blacksmith too. Oh, beautiful. I li actually, I quite like that. I might go with that one just because I like the idea of this robot on like a tiny little thruster jet having a massive hammer. The massive, massive hammer. We've also got oh, construction claws for 211. Right hand drill. Oh, for 220. We're getting into really powerful stuff here. Right hand saw blade for bleed damage. <laughs> oh, that's sexy. That's, this just goes on and on and on. Ah, and now you're getting into some of the ballistic ones which require a gun nut. And if you want, basically, yeah, if you want advanced laser stuff, you're going to need uh, high levels of science. Shish kebab. Ah, shish kebab only requires blacksmith 3, but isn't actually that spectacular. It's only damage 205 plus burn. That's not great. You know what? I'm actually thinking I'm going to go for the hammer because that's almost 200 base damage. The most powerful one I've got, I think, is the right hand drill for 223. So that's just... That's just base damage. I'd say just lowering that just slightly to 200, but adding in stagger is actually worth doing. So, right hand on this robot is going to be a hammer. And that required only two adhesive and eight steel. That's amazing. That's like nothing. We'll also just give him a bit more armor on his right arm. Lovely. Let's just make him a bit tougher. Interestingly, so far, if I wanted the right arm, I'd have no choice but to go with the right arm I've got. It's either that or no right arm at all. Though I'm guessing I'll be able to unlock more stuff later. Kind of as I find more schematics or whatever. So as for the torso, I can keep him as a Protectron. I can move him over to a Mr. Handy style, which appears to take the head off entirely for superior movement speed. Well, the health sounds like a good thing to me. Yes, I will go for with Science and Armour, which I've already got. Let's move him over to an Assaultron. Beautiful. And his torso gets to have an extra miscellaneous thing as well. Let's have a look over these. So, you'd have nothing at all on the torso. You could have a hacking subroutine. Or a lockpick mo- Oh! So if you'd like him to basically fulfill the same role as uh, the companions that do lockpicking or hacking for you, you can install one of those modules. Very, very cool. Alternatively, ah, and now we're getting into you need robotics expert for some of the advanced modules, which includes a uh, perception of nearby allies. So basically increasing my perception, I could add, ah, I could basically turn him into a recon tracking machine. That's kind of useful. Deals radiation damage to nearby enemies. That's pretty cool. Stealth field increases the stealth of nearby allies. Now that's pretty damn cool. Or you could just straight up add Tesla calls, just damage everything that's close by to him. Don't know how powerful that is, but it's pretty damn cool. Blimey, with a couple of perks of science and robotics expert, you can even turn him into a little kind of passive healing machine. It heals nearby human allies outside combat or increases their damage resistance. That's very, very cool. Now, turning our attention over to the head, we can either have him have no head, a protectron head for medium engagement distance reduced accuracy, or short engagement distance poor accuracy. So... What's the advantage of a head in that case? I'm not sure what engagement distance means. I guess, like, the range at which he's willing to get involved. In which case, I probably actually would rather have him have the, uh... Yeah, I'd rather have him have the Assaultron head, because I don't want him leaping into action. I'd rather, because I play stealthy, I'd rather have the Assaultron head. Have an Assaultron head. And mysteriously, you can either have the head factory armor or the head factory hardened armor. The hardened armor requires the exact same things to craft, gives a better result, and doesn't require any more criteria. So I'm not sure why you'd ever not have that, really. And just to confirm, obviously, what he can have on his left hand is exactly the same as what he can have on his right. But that kind of works for me, because that means that I could have the saw blade that causes the bleed damage on his other hand as well. So we could be wandering... I could just be wandering around with a flying robot with a massive hammer and a massive saw blade. That's... That's... I can't resist that. That's unresist... That, that cannot be resisted. No. Impossible. Beautiful. Mysteriously on the left, I can have an Assaultron left arm, which is superior melee damage, which I therefore definitely want, but I thought I wasn't allowed that. Yeah, I'll switch over to that. 
Uh, I don't really care about carry capacity. I'd rather have the uh, the superior damage. Am I allowed to do that on the the right too? No. For some weird reason, I'm not allowed. Only on one side am I allowed the assault run arm. Uh, I have no idea why that is. And then finally, we can choose a paint job for him. So we could have him as aqua blue. Ooh, jet black. Let's just zoom in. You can zoom in with the camera, which is kind of nice. Just get a close-up view of him. You know, it may say pink, but I'd say that's pretty much perfect many a true nerd purple right there. And it requires nothing at all. You can just have your robot whatever colour you feel like. Love it. Well, that leaves only one thing I really want to do, which is I'd really quite like to rename this robot. Um, unfortunately, I can't. Every time that I go into the rename screen and I type out a new name, it doesn't matter what button I press, it reverts back to just Automatron. I can't get it to maintain the name. It doesn't matter after I've typed the name whether I press Y again or A or I tap Enter on the keyboard or anything, it just defaults back to Automatron. Because let's be really clear, I want to call this robot Crispy. Because I want Crispy and Bacon to go on adventures together, and that'd be the name of the cop show that they star in. But, alright, fine. I guess, sadly, we're stuck travelling around with Automatron. Hello, Automatron. You have, should have a female voice, right? Hey. Yes. And can I talk to you at all? Do you have a personality proper? Um, hey. Got a sec? New orders, ma'am. So, at this point, I can basically just... Ooh! Self-destruct? No, don't self-destruct. Blimey, how? Uh, to save personality, never mind, dismiss. Okay, she so can't have a proper conversation with them. Though, I'll, I will ask if she happens to have a self-destruct. Are you able to self-destruct? Yes, but you should be absolutely certain before you issue the command. There will be a 10-second countdown, and then I'll be destroyed. Once you arm that system, there's no going back. That being said, do you wish to arm my self-destruct system? Uh, no, definitely not. Uh, no, no effect. No, no, I do not. Forget it. Cancel the self-destruct. Good. I'm pleased we didn't have to resort to that. Is there anything else you require? Ooh, now I'm wondering if we're going to uh, be going into kind of a bit like uh, Edie at the end of Lonesome Road in New Vegas. At the end of this DLC, will this robot have to sacrifice itself for the greater good? But yes, here we are. Here's my companion. Here's, I don't care what the game says, here's Crispy. This is Crispy. Crispy and Bacon are now going to go on adventures together. Strong, you should like Crispy. Crispy has a hammer and a saw blade. Crispy's bloody awesome. Now, let's go to the General Atomics factory, which I think, is that the one that's full of, or rather in the base game at least, is full of Mr. Handys? So, I've just travelled to the Old North Church, and basically I just need to head to the coastline and loop round to the south to get to that uh, factory. Because I happen to have not been to that bit of the map yet on this save file. But this all works for me, quite frankly. We can kind of test out our new friend here. Hello, you just need to die very quickly. Actually, you're a basic superhuman. You wouldn't have been a challenge. You wouldn't have been a challenge at all. You, finish off that dog. Let's see what you can do. Uh, let's watch her in action. So, she's going to... Murder one mutant hound, and oh, Circular saw the face off another. Beautiful, well done. Also, I think she might have just gone and started a new fight against something. What did you just... Did you just go and kill an organic without me telling you to? I'm starting to see flaws in this automatron plan. Okay, go on, see how you do against some basic soup mutants here. How are you going to do against them? That is a... Oh, he does a... Oh, a massive flurry attack. Nice. What sort of super mutant was that even? That was a... Oh, that was just a basic anyway. Alright, you seem pretty powerful. I mean, we know how much damage you can do, which is always very nice. But yeah, seems pretty strong. And I just killed a legendary over here. What have you got on you? Ooh! A uh, plasma inf... Oh my goodness. That's actually one of the most ridiculously powerful... Damn this no guns run! <laughs> that's ludicrous powerful! Because if you think about it, that's um 10 points of energy damage per bullet. And per bullet, the damage is 8. So 10 more than doubles the damage output of the... Oh, whoa, that's incredible. That's utterly ludicrous on toast. And I'm not allowed to use it in this playthrough. And I'll never find that in a playthrough where I'm allowed to use guns, obvious flippingly. Oh, hello. We've just run into a swarm bot. Screw you. Just a random swarm bot out here. Okay, so the mechanist troops are not just there, but ooh. A robot repair kit. So, robot repair kits repair robot companions uh, who are downed in combat. Favorite for quick use. Humans can't use robot repair kits on by themselves. Makes sense. How are you doing over there, by the way? Can I keep an eye on your health? No, I can't. But I'm, it looks like you're just basically smashing your way for everything. And you can also just pick up. 
Assaultron heads. Uh, so, oh, so that will presumably be now new mods. So basically kill robots, pick stuff off their corpses, unlock new stuff in order to make more robots for yourself. Fine. Ah, server mech iBots. We've got just more flipping of the mechanist machines just over there. And then you are, yeah, let's get you down. So, ooh, server mech iBots can take a few hits. Interesting. Down on the ground with you. Anything good here? Mechanist holotape? No. But they are a good source of, like, military-grade circuit boards, which therefore can be very, very useful indeed. Ah, and indeed right here, Assaultron legs. So now, previously all I had was Protectron legs or that kind of Mr. Handy Thruster. Now I could put some Assaultron legs on her if I wanted to, which could be very, very useful indeed. I'm guessing that is better than what I've currently got. The Shamrock Tap House. Ah, I will say, I think I could actually do with one of these. Uh, this is just a, hello, you're just going to die now. Uh, ow, probably. Uh, yes, I know that there is nothing good in here aside just from basically, you know, some basic standard loot. However, as a tap house, and thus as there's a place where there's like a restaurant and stuff, I want to go in here because a lot of these mods are requiring ceramic. I'm kind of out of ceramic, so I need some plates. Ah, pile of white plates, pile of white plates, beautiful. I will give you this bit of advice now if you haven't yet started playing Automatron. Um, start gathering plates. Plates, bowls, anything with ceramic in it. Very, very useful. Ah, even got a legendary rad roach down here, beautiful. Wonder what you had on you. Legendary rad roach in the pantry, perfect. Mutant Slayer's right leg. I think I've literally already got one of those. No, actually, by coincidence, this is, uh, I now actually have a mutant slayer for left and right leg. That's actually very useful. If I have to go up against some really tough super mutant -y fights, and spoiler warning, I will at some point in the fairly near future, uh, that will actually be really useful because now I've got 30% damage resistance against all super mutants. That's actually decent. Here's a fun tweak. All of a sudden, every single coffee mug and white plate that I can find has become incredibly valuable. Beautiful. Let's see how well you do against a Myalurk after I throw a grenade at it. Oh, I love my new grenades. Oh, you're a legendary, I think. You over there. I think... Oh, I think I might have just killed that legendary. Never mind. Oh, that's a legendary Myalurk Razor Claw. Maybe I'm just going to keep throwing grenades at that thing. Just in case. Just because my grenades are pretty bloody powerful. Blow up the car, 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 blow up the car. Up the car. Yes! That worked pretty well. Beautiful. In fact, I think there might have actually been two legendaries here. Let's just check these here. No, you were just a... Oh, I may have started a small amount of chain reactions. Is anything else about to explode? No. Oh. Oh, a legendary raider. Oh, it's just all the legendaries here today. Also, there was a mine there. Right, Crispy, I need you to cover me for a second. Oh, no, no. Legendary slow time. This works for me. And forward, forward, forward. No. Just take out that Raider Scum. I'm really low on health right now. Oh, flip. Ow. Crispy, where are you? Now, this guy... <gasps> oh, my God. That's a furious super slow... <laughs> yes! Yes! That's the best thing! I'm so happy! Increased damage after each consecutive hit on the same target off a base of 235! First a plasma-infused minigun, now a furious super sledge! What the hell?! Oh my god, that's amazing! That's... Is, is, that, is that possibly like the best... And then I've got a fortifying metal left, plus one strength of endurance on my left arm. No, my left arm is currently sentinel. So I can keep the sentinel gear, but I'll change over to fortifying metal for the moment because I'd rather have the plus one strength. So now I've got two bits of fortifying gear on. Just so you're aware, my current base strength is 13. 13 base strength outside of power armor. That's the most ridiculous thing. What the hell? Right, I need to go around because I, I swear I saw another Myalurk that was like uh, twitching like it was a legendary. So I just need to check the corpses in case that was actually true because I believe it is. Also, I've just saved in case I do something stupid like, you know, running into a mine or something and dying because that is, that is just the most glorious drop. 
imaginable. That's just a thing of, of sexy, sexy, sexy beauty. That's insanity. Well, if there was another one, unfortunately, right now, I cannot find it. Uh, now, let's cut back through here, back to the waterfront, because I believe somewhere around here, there's something else that will actually be worth picking up just on the way past. And indeed, right here, Donny, a little boy right here who will give us a quest that we may as well pick up on the way past. Did you see it? The big eye in the water? I didn't. Tell me about the big eye you saw in the water. Slow down, son. Start from the beginning. There's a sea monster in the harbor. I saw its big eye poke up out of the water and look around. Hey, do you think it's dangerous? It hasn't attacked anyone yet, but maybe it's just waiting. And indeed, I suspect it's very dangerous. Keep your distance, kid. I'll come back and deal with that later. So yes, indeed, a little strange monster out in the harbour. Let's not worry about that yet. That's one of the quests I didn't do on my first playthrough of this game. But we will be coming back for that in a little bit. And hopefully, if we're very, very lucky, we might just find uh, in this diner some more ceramic plates. No, tragically, this is one of those diners that decided it didn't need plates to serve its food on, of course. Now, this is probably, unfortunately, going to mess with Crispy's pathfinding. But at this point, the easiest way I can go is to take a little trip just over the water. Which I think, unfortunately, Crispy is going to struggle. But you can fly. Can you, can you make it over here? Crispy? No, Crispy's now stuck over there. I might need to uh, fast travel away and back to this area once I get a little bit uh, close to where I want to go. Oh, no, she's... Oh, flip! She tried to follow me, and now she's at the bottom of the ocean. You gonna, you gonna be okay, Crispy? Crispy? Never mind. I'm sure she's fine. Oh, good. She's caught up. Nice. Now, I've just got to quickly pass by uh, the feral ghoul stalkers. Ah, oh, I know where we are. And just a moment, if you'd be so kind. You, take care of the ghouls for me. Uh, that was... Oh, you're a legendary. A legendary feral ghoul reaver. It looks like you're going to be able to take her out pretty quickly. Uh, let's just put a grenade into the middle of them. And then that is another one dead there. Beautiful. Looks like you can very easily take care of all of this. Now, which one were you? Fortifying combat right arm. Game, you're being very nice to me today. Hey, what's on my right arm? Actually, I think my right arm is my martyr gear. I'd, I'd rather keep martyr than have an extra... Uh, no, um, behind you. Behind you. You probably want to turn around about now. That's right. You just give a great big whiz of everything. Oh, flip. More of them to come. Yeah, I think you can handle this. I think you've got this. She is powerful. Powerful. Pa but uh, I think kind of because of the assault on heads on her, she's very not perceptive. <laughs> Which I actually like, because it means for once, they won't just kind of cause trouble I don't actually want them to get involved in. Ooh, wait, hang on, hello. Military grade duct tape, yes. Now, as I've got that fast travel location set just by General Electronics, I've nipped back to Sanctuary because of two very important little things I need to do. Number one, you'll be aware, obviously, I picked up a plasma-infused minigun. Now, I've got a really interesting question about this, which is, obviously, you may be aware, I do occasionally use a high-speed shredding minigun purely because I think it's a really fun weapon. Now, question. If I were to put those mods onto a plasma-infused minigun, does the whirring barrel, even with no bullets in it, still give you the advantage, i.e. do I still get plus 10 per hit from plasma damage, off just the worry blade. Interesting experiment worth looking into, I'd say. So I've taken everything off that base minigun. Now the plasma infused minigun, I'm now going to add all the extra stuff into. I'm going to make its barrel go faster, because that will presumably mean that it will spin faster and thus do more damage when it's doing its worry without bullets. And add the shredder on. Beautiful. So now we've got a plasma infused shredding minigun. I'm looking forward to testing this out. And we've also got the Furious Super Sledge, something so utterly ridiculous I need to start improving it now because I can do straight away. Which is, I can go from 244 up to 244 plus, oh my goodness, plus heating coil, plus another 48 energy damage just with Blacksmith 2. Or with Blacksmith 3 and Science 1, I could... Wait, what? Oh, it's worse, but it adds a chance to stun. Well, I'd say that's probably the superior then. I'd, I'm just happy with the heating coil. Build the heating coil, please. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh my goodness. A furious heating coil super sledge. <laughs> this is the best day ever. 
Now I've got to test out this new plasma infused, hopefully, shredding minigun. Now I've sold all the ammo to Carla. Now if I recall correctly, normally if I fast travel to the Museum of Freedom, there's a whole bunch of flipping uh, raiders there. They would be an excellent test for this. Yep, sounds like it. Uh, you, hello, you over there, hello. Oh, that, it shredded him pretty quickly. Uh, oh, not that quickly. Not, none of them have been turned into goo yet. So I suspect, oh, don't care. Oh, never mind. You, you are quite efficient to this sort of thing. Uh, no, 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 no. Let me take care of it. Let me take care of it. Let me take care of it. And sadly, none of them were turned into goo, which makes me think uh, the effect is probably being added to bullets, not to the whirly effect. But regardless, this is a fun weapon. So basically, I've picked up, yeah, plasma infused minigun. Tank, wait, tank bot. There's a tank bot over there. I should probably be a little bit... Okay, fine, we got a tank bot. Fine, hello. Hello, you want to be friends? Oh, can you deal with a tank bot? How are you going to do against tank bot? Actually, screw you. Tank bot. Just go like this and whack him with a thing. This isn't working very well. You know, maybe I should use something else. Uh, actually, you know what this will do? Just very slowly tank bot him. There we are. Nice. Ow, he exploded. Note to self. Oh, what the? Brotherhood Knight. What? Okay, life's gone a bit weird, which is the Brotherhood here are supposedly hostile. And, uh, a vertebrate has just landed and then taken off again. Did I do some damage to you or something? Are you, are you still hostile? Are you, hello? You guys okay? No, okay, maybe I accidentally just caught them in my, oh, oh, oh. No. I don't know why those guys are red rather than green. Life is weird. Uh, okay, so I killed a tank bot. Possibly the explosion was big enough to damage a vertebrate going overhead. And the Brotherhood temporarily decided they didn't like me. But they seem to be cool with me now, so life seems to be... Okay, good. Life's fine. Excellent. I haven't just made an enemy of the Brotherhood by accident. That would be terrible. Okay, bad general electronics. Though I can't help but notice the red bleep of a suicider over there. I kind of just want to put a grenade right in on top of him. Can we pull this off? Yes, that looks about right. Love that throwing arc. And then, uh-oh. Apparently that wasn't good enough. Not 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 good enough. Throw another one in. Oh, flip. Um, would you mind taking... Yeah, would you mind taking care of him, please? Yeah, take care of him. Nice. I get the feeling that's probably going to have damaged my robot. I may possibly need to uh, use a robot repair kit. Yes, please repair... Using robot repair kit. Oh, that's about to explode. Walk away from the car. <laughs> oh, I love it. She, I think she almost died a second time there. Uh, but fortunately, just not quite. Now, I've got my super sledge here. My heated coil super sledge. I think this is probably going to be my... I mean, like, it's so much more powerful than General Chow's Revenge. Even though it doesn't gain the bonus versus robots. I think it's probably better anyway. Plus, the legendary effect of it getting more and more powerful is just ridiculous. Though, we'll have to factor in, of course, it's... um Because it's a slow weapon and Bethesda doesn't have fixed the bug with uh, slow weapons in VATS. It's still technically not going to be as good at sneak attack criticals. But once we get into open combat, it will definitely be the superior weapon. If there's like a massive terrifying sentry bot to take out, this will be just the thing to do it. Now, General Atomics Factory. This, I think I've been here before. I think this is the place that in the base game is full of Mr. Handys, but we shall see. Let's start off with General Charles Revenge until things go to hell at least. Yeah, I know this place. I know this place indeed. I recognize it. This is indeed uh, the place that does have the Mr. Handys in the base game. Uh, I always thought there might be more here than what I was seeing. I'm glad to see maybe I was right, in fact. So, we've got nothing here yet. Oh, caution. We've got caution. Legendary junk bot. Legendary junk bot is nervous. Okay, aggressive beeping. Where are you guys coming? Are you, gonna, you guys coming over to that door? Can I... Yep, yeah, fine. Legendary junk bot. And... Nice thing there. Beautiful. Let's Legend dying bleep. Oh, flip. They all explode. They all explode and it does damage. Uh, so I think he just took out one of his friends by accident. You've got almost no health left, but you get pretty good health regen going on. Plasma cartridge. Assault on left arm. Nice. Uh, enhanced targeting card. Fusion core. Robot repair kit. Ooh, robo brain torso. Nice. I don't think we've even seen a robo brain yet. I know they were coming back for this DLC, but we haven't seen them yet. 
Now we've just got to explore this place thoroughly. I want to kill every single robot in here. Because of course every single robot is potentially a new part I can attach to my robot. Which is very, very good indeed. Oh, I like it. I like the fact that, you know, all of a sudden you've got a real incentive to go around killing everything. Because everything gives you, uh, because everything kind of gives you more parts that you can use to improve your own robot. So it's all very, very nice indeed. All of a sudden you've got an incentive for all this lovely violence. One sneak attack to you. Beautiful. Deal. Just remember, my blitz style doesn't necessarily work very well with robot enemies because of their bloody self-destructs. Uh, more holotapes, robot repair, beautiful, more circuitry. Though I feel like, as I say, the limiting factor I've got right now is the ceramic, the base material, not anything else. Okay, we got robots up top that look a little bit tougher than the ones I've been finding so far. They've got... Ah, they've started to get the same upgrades I can put on my robot. Makes sense. Uh, actually, you know, the, probably the best thing I can do, because it looks like they're melee focused, is I could probably just sneak directly underneath them. Aluminium canister, very important. Uh, sneak underneath them, lure them over to the staircase, and just kind of get them as they go through. Oh, hello! You're a junk bot. Junk bots appear to be not very good, but potentially do explode. I think I saw one of you explode previously, so... Back, no, no, back, back, back off. Just wait to see if it's... A, are you about to explode? Let's take them out. Why is... Okay, there's a target up there. An actual main target. As well as... Ooh, an Assaultron Torso. Pretty sure I've already got one of you, but all right. Uh, dying Bleep. Oh, my guys decided to go and get involved. You can easily handle the little swarm bot. Though. Oi! Oi! My robot! No! My poor robot. Now, uh, yes, repair. Repair, 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 repair. I'm not sure what actually... Ki what killed you? Uh, there must be something powerful upstairs. We should probably go and take that out. Hello. What are you... What is up here? That's the main target. I'm guessing it might be something like a sentry bot or something. Uh, servo mech uh, thing. Uh, what have we got here? Just need to... Can I get eyes on it? Whatever it is. It is... Uh... Oh, no. It's it's the main... Um, I know what that is. That's the uh, the Mr... What is it? The, I think it's like a Mr. Gutsy that's locked in a cage. I've seen this before. I think I, I visited this place briefly in my first, my first playthrough. Um, yeah, that's not that dangerous. I'm pretty sure he can't get out until I open the door anyway. So I've got some time to do some looting. Soltron Tour. So I think I've already got that part. In fact, I think that might be what's currently on my robot. So that's fine. That's a mod. And normally mods don't weigh anything. So not exactly a problem. I think I've accidentally stumbled into the QA department for Mr. Handys. You know what? I think I'm going to leave that. Just for the moment until we're done killing, you know, the terrifying murder bots upstairs. We'll come back to this. I think I was told last time I was here I did actually miss something. So uh, whatever it is that I missed, we will do it this time. Oh, yes. An integrated robo brain. The first robo brain we've seen. Well, as we're dealing with robo brains, exactly what I said. Get the furious super sledge ready. Now, can I actually get at you yet? I don't think I can get at you, and I don't think you can get at me. Even though you're sort of glitching through the thing, I don't think we can get at each other yet. But I think we can handle a robo-brain with a furious super sledge. Security door. Crack them open. Weapons out. And you. You're going to go down very quickly. Uh, one hit. A more powerful hit. And a 30 for more powerful hit. But actually, I'm probably going to regret this because now I'm out of vats. And I'm still being shot. I'm dropping a new quantum just to get some healing going on. And what else is left? One side mech. Apparently, I don't have a chance to hit. Uh, I do. I, you know what? I think I had a chance to hit. Also, I've shut up the mechanist, which is great news. Now, what else was in here? You just had an Assaultron left leg. Find anything useful? Yeah, I'm finding all sorts of stuff I'm going to be able to plug into you later. Wait, is that... I don't know if that's sexual when it comes to... Ro I don't know what counts as sexual for robots. Uh, so now, over here... Mechanist holotape, more stuff. Ooh, a laser short scope. Don't know what one of those is. I'm guessing that's another thing for me to just plug into everything else. Big pile of ammo, pulse grenades. Oh, by the way, I t apparently I told a lie about pulse grenades uh, when I was uh, in uh, when I was in Fort Hagen. Pulse grenades are like EMP damage and damage versus robots just isn't a thing anymore. Instead, the only thing pulse grenades actually do these days is they just do energy damage. Um, so it's different to how it used to be. So I, uh, sorry, I, uh, I misinformed you about that previously. It is basically just energy. Uh, there's just energy damage, so it just calculates off energy resistance. Now, the um, the integrated Robo Brain. You've got a bit of ammo for some reason. A Robo Brain head. Wait, 
doesn't that mean just that's that's just a brain? If I plug that brain into you, then this robot comes back to life as you. Because brain, if you transfer a brain into a new body, you're not giving that body a brain transplant. You're giving that brain a new body. Never mind. Mechanist device. Now, what the heck is one of these? So, speak to Ada. Well, I, okay, well, she's back at flipping Sanctuary Hills because I, I decided I'd rather, you know, build my own bot. But in all fairness, I'm very happy with Crispy Bot. Crispy Bot has been doing very, very well. Plus, Ada kind of feels like she's a bit more sentient, so I'd feel, you know, worse about the whole modifying her and changing her all the time thing. I feel better doing that with a bot I myself have just created. But anyway, apparently, Mr. Handy Test Chambers. Let's check this out while I'm actually here because I missed this last time. First, we must test your disciplinary and behavioural management skills. The quality assurance associate will be playing the role of your hypersensible charge. Little Timmy. Little Timmy has broken a valuable base while playing catch in the axe. The vase was a family heirloom, and it is quite irreplaceable. Do we smash him with a hammer? Please, punish the child accordingly. Okay, where is he? I'm going to punish him really accordingly. Is this, is this Timmy? I'm trying. He won't die. Well, he's kind of already dead. Is the game not happy with the fact that I've decided to try and use melee weapons? Timmy, you've messed up. I've also set myself on fire there. Wherever Timmy is, he's on fire. All right? Fantastic. The appropriate punishment was separation of the child from any potential source of entertainment. Oh, sorry. I hear about a child called Timmy and the kill everything instincts kind of kick in there. Right. Think... Think like a Mr. Handy. Think polite. Please assess the state of the crying child and fulfill its needs. Okay, um, bring a ball into the cot. Yeah, there you are. Have a toy. Have a toy. A different, a rattle. Rattle. Have a different rattle. There you are. No, bottle. Baby bottle. Are you hungry? The child was hungry. Yes. I've just leveled up from giving a non-existent child a baby bottle. Beautiful. I am totally on for being a Mr. Handy. I'm so good at this. Please child-proof this environment by moving any hazardous object to where little ants cannot reach. Ah, there's a machete in the fridge. Splendidly done. All potentially fatal objects have been put out of a child's reach. Perfect. Please take a replacement fusion core from the safe in the hallway on your way out. Nice. So that's just a little mini quest complete. Oh, three fusion cores, as well as stim packs, wonder glue, fuse. Nice, good stuff all round there. And let's just do a quick level up here. Nice, Vault Tech up to the next level. Now, I'd say it's pretty obvious what I probably sensibly want to do next. It is worth me taking science up to level two. Because as you may remember, I've already got Blacksmith at two. I've got Armor at two. But actually, I'd just be allowed to take that at three at the moment. But I'll leave that for now. Instead, I will take Science to two. Because with Science, Blacksmith and uh, Armor all at level two, I should hopefully be able to build some pretty impressive robots and hopefully some better mods as well. So, Science two, lovely. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I think that is enough for now. Next time on Fallout 4 Automatron, we will speak to Ada, figure out what that device is and what the next move is. And also, I will go and plug Crispy back into the machine, see what new stuff we have unlocked as a result of all those robots we've killed, and see if we can improve Crispy and make her into an even more powerful robot. Especially now I've picked up a huge number of plates, and thus have a lot more ceramic, and can just tie the plates straight to Crispy, thus making her tougher somehow. Yes, that is what we will do tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this is the beginning of Fallout 4 Automatron. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Apparently, they've all decided to bring knives to a gunfight, which is a terrible idea. Oh, yeah, you just, you, you try charging, why don't ya? Oh, dear. <laughs> Never charge the man with the shotgun. Does it involve me going and killing people? Because if so, how many and where? Right, this is embarrassing. I've kind of just locked myself out of my flat. Do you happen to have a spare set of keys?